Hello everyone, Anthony Fasano, your engineering career coach, engineeringcareercoach.com, where you can check out my podcast, The Engineering Career Coach, where I actually help real live engineers right on the podcast to overcome challenges in their career and also to achieve the loftiest of goals in their engineering career. I'm also the founder of the Institute for Engineering Career Development, a mastermind community for motivated engineers, which you can check out at engineeringcareerdevelopment.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about organization and productivity, which is becoming more and more important in today's world because so many engineers are so stressed out and they don't have that work-life balance. I can't tell you how many messages I get from your engineers saying, Anthony, I need your help with work-life balance. I'm working around the clock and I don't know how to stop. And a big part of that is lack of productivity and people being disorganized. So let's get into that point so I can help you to be organized and create an extraordinary engineering career. I'm just going to go through and run through and get you some points here to try to help you to become a little bit more productive in your day um, and a little bit more organized. First of all, the first one's very simple, may even be laughable, but it's the idea of having a bound notepad with you wherever you go. I always have one with me myself that I can write down information in as I need to. But as an engineer, it's so important because you'll be at your desk, you'll get phone calls, you'll go into the conference room with a set of plans and a, and a, and a meeting and you'll have to write down notes. You'll go out to a field inspection at a, at a project site need to take notes. You'll be at a consultant's office. So you want to have all the information in one place because if you don't, you will have yellow sticky notes all over your office and all over your monitor. Trust me, I've seen it. So be smart about keeping your information together. Email management is a huge one. The ability to be able to effectively manage your emails can make or break you. If you get trapped in that inbox all day, Right, and then we have written a bunch of articles about this on engineeringcareerdevelopment.com on our blog. You will get trapped and you'll never get out of there. A couple tips here. First of all, shut that Outlook buzz off that goes on every time an email comes in. That ding, whatever it is, ding, 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 email, 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 pull me away from work, pull me away from work. That's going to be killer for you. Instead, try to check your email at regularly scheduled times or a couple times a day. All right. Now, if you're a more experienced engineer or someone that's working in a, in a sensitive field like construction, you may have to be very, very sensitive to your emails, and I understand that. But if you're a younger engineer who's just starting out in the design world, you probably can check your email twice a day. Because if you check them as they come in, you're going to break your train of thought every couple of minutes. And you're going to really, really not only reduce your productivity, but possibly even reduce the quality of your work. So please, be very sensitive to email management. Your contacts. Keep a good contact database. We talked about networking and building relationships and yielding opportunities. Well, make sure that you get those business cards into a database, preferably one that connects with your cell phone. So if you ever need to contact someone when you're wherever you are, out of the office or home, you can do it. Your calendar. It's going to be important for you to in order to get opportunities to have meetings with people. Like I said, networking meetings, go to lunch with someone, go to breakfast, go to a project meeting, meet a deadline, get them on your calendar. And if there's anyone else that needs to be involved, you can invite them through your calendar as well. Your desk, this is a big one. The, the way that your desk looks represents you. People don't realize that. But I had a boss who had a mountain of papers on his desk all the time. and Nobody took him serious because of that. People were always like, ah, he doesn't know what's going on. He's disorganized. In reality, he was very smart. He did know what he was doing, but the perception was different. Think about it. Clients come into your office and see that. Um, your staff sees that. It, it's You have to, listen, things happen through the course of the day. Your desk is not always going to be perfect. But what you should try to do is clean it up at least at the end of the day so you don't walk into a mess the next day. Lastly here, I'm going to talk about to-do list. I read a couple of great books on organization. Getting Things Done was a very good book, as well as The Power of Less. And basically, what I picked up, one of the things I picked up from those books on a to-do list is to have two columns in your to-do list. The left column being the task, and the right column being, or the next column being the next step, right? And this is great for engineers, because we can't just have like, on a to-do list, do this project. 
it's like, no, what's next? Write the report, call the client, schedule a site inspection. So when you break your, just like your goals, when you break them down into smaller steps, things become much easier to achieve and they kind of, fo- it kind of forwards the action. 